begin our understanding of current and circuits, we must understand that all materials are made of atoms. Those atoms are composed of three basic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are found in the middle of the atom called the nucleus with electrons orbiting at different distances. The electron and proton are charged particles and a proton has a positive charge while the electron has a negative charge. This understanding of basic atomic structure is important because the movement of electrons through a material at the atomic level is electricity. To get an electron to move between atoms, we must investigate a piece of metal at the atomic level. A metal, like copper, which is the most commonly used metal in electronics, is made up of copper atoms that arrange themselves into a lattice structure. Within that lattice structure, there are electrons that are orbiting at different distances from the nucleus of the copper atom. The electrons furthest from the nucleus are called valence electrons, and they are better able to move between atoms. These valence electrons will randomly move within the copper atom. However, the random movement is not enough energy to power electrical circuits. These electrons must be moved together in one direction to produce enough electric energy. To do this, a force must be applied. This force is generated by using an electric field and creating a potential charge difference between two points on the material. The direction of the electric field force is described as the direction a positive charge would travel. In the case of our piece of copper, if the electric field has a greater positive charge on the right of the material, then the electrons, which carry a negative charge, will begin drifting towards the positive end of the electric field. In this way, the electron movement will be opposite of the electric field direction. It is the movement of these conduction electrons that are responsible for electrical conduction in metals. Electric current is the amount of flow of charge through a material. It is measured in a unit called amperes whose symbol is a capital A. Electric current is similar to a current in water. It is a measure of how quickly a collection of charge is moving through a conductor. Specifically, it is the rate of 1 coulomb per second. A coulomb is the amount of charge of about 6 times 10 to the 18th power of electrons. Therefore, current is measuring how many electrons are moving through a material over an amount of time. The greater the number of electrons, the more current the material has and the greater the amount of energy. In a conducting material, as electrons are moving through the lattice structure, they carry with them kinetic energy and charge. When the electrons move through the material due to an electric field, they carry with them the energy from the electric field. During their movement, the electrons will make collisions with the positively charged atoms in the lattice structure. The atoms are positively charged because they have lost their valence electrons. During the collision, the electrons transfer the energy gained from the electric field force to the positively charged atoms. This transfer of energy due to the collisions is called the potential difference and is measured in volts. A large potential difference means that there is a greater amount of energy transfer occurring between the electrons and the positive atoms. As electrons move, they produce several different effects. Heating is an effect of electron movement when an energy is transferred to atoms in a material. This can often be felt with electronic devices that have been on for a long period of time. They produce heat as an effect of the movement of the electrons. There is also a magnetic effect due to the movement of electrons. Charged particles like electrons not only produce an electric field, but also a magnetic field. Therefore, when electrons move through a material, that material gains a magnetic field from the net movement of the electrons. All wireless charging uses this effect of magnetic fields produced by currents to cause charging in devices. Lastly is the chemical effects of currents. Chemical reactions can alter the amount of energy of an electron and cause them to move. This usually occurs in single-use batteries. However, Currents can also have an effect on chemical reactions in materials and cause reactions to reverse. This is done with rechargeable batteries found in a lot of electronic devices. The electromotive force describes the conversion of one form of energy into another form. Specifically, this is seen in devices that convert electrical energy. 
Examples include the conversion of magnetic energy to electrical energy in devices like microphones, generators, and dynamos. A second term, potential difference, is used when energy is converted from electrical energy. Examples of this might include the conversion of electrical energy to light or heat energy in a lamp. Power is how much energy is transferred over a period of time. In the case of electric energy, we are considering how much energy is transferred by the electrons as they move. To imagine this scenario, we must consider a situation where a conducting rod has a potential difference between either end. We know the electrons will move at some rate called the current. Each electron carries with it a charge Q. The total charge amount moving through the conductor is equal to the current times the change in time, which is how long the current is moving for. We also know that the amount of energy transferred, or the work done, is the charge Q times the potential difference. Making a substitution for charge value, the work done is the current times the change in time times the potential difference. Since power is the amount of energy transferred over a period of time as previously mentioned, then power is work divided by the change in time. If we substitute the work value for its meaning in terms of current and potential difference, we see that change in time cancels itself out leaving the statement power is equal to the current times the potential difference. Not all conducting materials effectively transfer energy in the same way. This difference in ability to transfer energy leads to electrical resistance. One effect of resistance is a heating effect. Therefore, some materials like tungsten will heat up more than a material like copper because tungsten has a greater resistance. The resistance of a material is defined as the potential difference across the material divided by the current in the material. When the current in the potential difference is known in a material, then the resistance of that material can be measured. The resistance of a material not only relies on the material itself, but also on the size and shape of the material. Resistance has a direct relationship with the length, which means as the length of a resistor increases, the resistance also increases. This makes sense since this is an increase in the path the electron must travel and increases the occurrence of collisions within the lattice structure of the resistor. Resistance has an inverse relationship with the cross-sectional area of the resistor. This means that as the resistor gets wider, the resistance decreases. This should also make sense as there is a greater area for the electrons to flow, thus increasing the current, meaning more electrons can move through the resistor. Resistivity is the measure of how resistant a material is independent of size and shape of material. The resistivity of the material is calculated based on the resistance of the material times the cross-sectional area divided by the length of the material. Resistivity is represented by rho, and is the value of the resistance R of the material times the cross-sectional area A divided by the length of material L. This value of the resistivity is useful to know because it provides insight into the resistance of different materials and can help inform the choices used when constructing circuits. Conductive materials show a relationship between the potential difference and the current. As the current is increased in a conductor, the potential difference increases by a linear rate. That rate of increase is the resistance of the conductive material. These types of materials are called ohmic conductors. We see this ohmic conductor relationship in materials like wires. However, not all materials follow Ohm's law. Some materials like semiconductors have non-ohmic behavior. This non-ohmic behavior shows that current and potential differences do not show linear relationship. This results in the material having variable resistance at different currents. For example, when we consider a filament in a lamp, it produces non-ohmic behavior. Each electron carries with it the same amount of charge. However, as the current is increased, there are more electrons moving generating a greater transfer of charge through the filament. This increases the kinetic energy of the lattice, causing the atoms to move in the filament, leading to more collisions with electrons, which then transfers more energy. 
This effect is compounded as the current increases, leading to a nonlinear relationship between current and potential difference. Circuits are a combination of electrically conducting materials oftentimes combined to complete a function. Simple circuits consist of an electric power source, wires to carry the electric charge, and a load to carry the electric charge through. There are two important ways to connect a circuit, either in series or in parallel. A series circuit is a circuit that is connected with components following one another. A parallel circuit is one in which the components are not connected one right after each other, but instead are run so each component is individually connected to the power source. The three components A, B, and C show the difference in arrangement. Importantly, the arrangement of the circuit also has effects on measured current, potential difference, and resistance in the circuit. In a series circuit, the current remains constant across all of the components. However, the amount of total resistance in the circuit will reduce the current. Consider the circuit with three components. As the electric charge moves through each component, the charges are losing energy to the components. This means that as the charge flows through the circuit, the same amount of energy moves through each component. To illustrate this, a circuit with a power source and two light bulbs compared to a circuit with the same power source and three light bulbs will result in the circuit with two light bulbs being brighter than the circuit with three light bulbs. This is because with the additional resistance from the third light bulb, there is less energy being transferred to each light bulb in the circuit. In a parallel circuit, each component is connected to the power source separately. This is important for functionality because in some cases, like lights in a home, you want to be able to turn off one set of lights without turning off all of the lights. However, this individual connection has consequences to the current and potential difference that we measure. From the power source, we know that the current will be equal entering each component. Because the electric charge has multiple pathways to travel, the charge will follow each pathway. The multiple pathways allowed decreases the overall resistance in the circuit. The way to think about this is to consider water falling from a high point to a low point. The rate of the water falling stays constant. This represents the current. If two pathways exist to allow the water to move, then more water can move. Thus, the resistance to the water moving has decreased since there are more ways for the water to get out to the same point. The same is true of electric charges in a parallel circuit. The multiple pathways give more available lanes for charges to move through and thus reduces the electrical resistance in the whole circuit. To find equivalent resistance in a series circuit with multiple resistors, add the resistance of each component. Consider this circuit of four components. If components A and B have a resistance of two ohms each, and components C and D had resistances of five ohms each, using a single resistor equivalent to 14 ohms would be equal to the effect of the four individual resistors combined. In parallel circuits, finding the equivalent resistance in a circuit is much different. Parallel circuits have the effect of reducing resistance because of the multiple pathways the electric charge can follow. This means that the equivalent resistance in a circuit is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistance. So if we took the same four resistors A, B, C, and D, but hook them up in parallel to find their equivalent resistance, we must first add the reciprocals and it would be equal to 14 over 10. However, then we take the reciprocal of the answer to get 10 over 14 or about 0 0.7 ohms, meaning that the whole circuit has an equivalent resistance less than each of the resistors in the circuit. Not all resistors are static in their resistance. Variable resistors can have their resistance changed either by changing the dimensions of the resistor or the materials that it is made from. Some variable resistors like thermistors 
R is temperature dependent, and as the temperature of the resistor increases, the resistance in the circuit decreases. The heated material allows more electrons to become available as charge carriers due to the increase in energy. Another type of variable resistor is a light dependent resistor. The energy gained from photons of light striking the material makes a greater number of electrons free to carry a charge and thus decreases the resistance of the material. Chemical cells, more commonly known as batteries, use a chemical reaction to produce a charge difference between the positive and negative terminals of the battery. This potential difference generates a force which propels electrons from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. The chemical reaction is driven by the flow of charges and thus electrons gain energy from the chemical reaction. There are two major forms of these chemical cells, primary and secondary. Primary cells are cells in which when all of the chemicals in the cell have reacted, they are completely discharged and are then thrown away. Secondary cells are chemical cells that can be recharged. The recharging of a cell occurs when the secondary cell is plugged into an electric power source. The charge from the electric power source is sent in an opposing direction through the cell. This allows the cell to make its chemical energy available again for electrical purposes. The construction of materials chosen for a battery cell cause internal resistance. This means there is not only resistance within the circuit, due to things like light bulbs and resistors, but also within the battery cell itself. This internal resistance has an effect on the overall resistance and current of the whole circuit. This is seen when measuring the potential difference across a battery. A 9 volt battery might register a lower voltage when measured because there is lost potential difference due to the loss of energy required to move the electrons through the cell. The result of this is often experienced as an increase of temperature. The next time you charge or use a battery, feel the temperature of the battery as it is charging or discharging to experience this effect of internal resistance. The internal resistance of a cell also impacts the power delivered to an external circuit. The power supplied by a cell is equal to the power delivered to the external circuit as well as the power wasted due to internal resistance. This has an interesting effect of maximizing the power from a cell when the external circuit resistance is equal to the internal resistance of the cell. This is visualized in the graph. As the load resistance increases, the amount of power dissipated also increases until it reaches a peak. The peak occurs at the same resistance value as the internal resistance of the cell. As the resistance in the circuit continues to increase though, the power decreases, which follows our previous understandings of the relationship between power and resistance. The implications of this information is that when working with electronics, it becomes important to match the type of cell with the external resistance that it will power. Solar cells are an important renewable source of electricity, especially for places that cannot access conventional means of electrical production. Solar cells utilize photons released by the sun to cause electrons to be released. Those electrons are then connected to an external circuit for use. The benefits of solar cells are that they can be used for electrical production in places that cannot access normal forms of electrical production. However, they are currently still expensive and approximately 25% of energy is converted to electricity, making them less efficient than other forms of energy.